Hello students. Uh, in this lecture 16 of calculus of variations, we are going to discuss the essential and suppressible boundary conditions, then certain examples related to this and a few exercises are given for your practice. Uh, basically, this essential and suppressible boundary condition, it belongs to the earlier discussed method, Rayleigh Ritz method, that was uh, uh, used to solve some boundary condition, uh, some boundary value problems. In the earlier lecture, we have discussed that when we are given a boundary value problem, then certain boundary values are given. And when boundary values are given, we have to uh, choose some approximate solution or some choice function y of x or the choice solution y of x in such a way that the boundaries given boundary conditions are satisfied by the choice function. But uh, uh, now we need certain modification in Rayleigh's method in the situation when the derivative of unknown function appears in the boundary conditions. So then Rayleigh's method uh, needs certain modifications. So actually problem in the situation is this one. You are given a boundary value problem in such a manner and subject to the boundary conditions number two and number three. Now here in number two and three, we can see that there is an involvement of the derivative of y and involvement of derivative of y here also. So in such a case, uh, certain modifications are required in the related method. So what are those? You can see as usual, in case of related method, we obtain the functional of which one is the Euler's equation. So in general, uh, we can write in this way. The general functional form is in this way. I equal to this P Y dash square Q Y square minus 2 R Y DX. So that means if uh, this is the general form of the functional, then we have to optimize this means we have to form the Euler equation for this but uh, here we are simplifying it further using the uh, sufficient condition uh, of uh, existence of an extremal so here what is p what is q and what is r this is important you see here p is this thing this function q is this function here and r is the function on right hand side so whenever such a boundary value problem is given, then you have to compare that problem with this standard equation and accordingly you will form a function. Now you see, uh, now we are uh, going to modify this functional also. Uh, you take the variation of this i on both sides, you can see, then we write it as in this form. You take the variation inside p y. This becomes twice of y dash and delta of uh, y p plus uh, this uh, when take along with this we have twice of y delta of y minus 2 r delta of y. So in this situation this delta of y is here and for this we are having delta of y dash. Now for this part we are taking the integration by part we are keeping this part as such and we are integrating the first uh, part according to integration by parts so when we integrate this one by parts so we have first function and integration of this becomes delta y and we put the limits a to b plus uh, this twice of you know we have the integration a to b twice and then uh, differentiation of this part differentiation of this part this is equal to minus p y dash basically uh, actually here is minus sign so the minus is taken here minus p y dash and derivative of that again the integration of this becomes delta y so delta y will be here and the rest of the thing is as such so delta y here and delta y was here along with that so that is taken outside so delta y is here now 
the further simplifications gives you because now here uh, we will sub simplify by substituting the upper limit here it will become y dash b delta y of b then minus of uh, y dash of a and delta y of a subsequently uh, we are getting the terms like this terms like this in fact uh, we are substituting uh, the limits in place of the variable because here p is not a constant p is the function of x as you know here p is the function of x so everywhere in place of variable you are going to write the upper limit twice of here p b y dash b delta y b then minus lower limit is like that plus twice of this thing so now uh, we can get the value of this y dash a and y dash b from equation 2 and 3 respectively from here equation number 2 and from equation number 3 we can get value of y dash a for example from here what is y dash y dash a is equal to alpha 2 minus alpha naught y a divided by alpha 1 so this value uh, can be substituted here in this equation in place of uh, uh, y dash a and similarly for y dash b we can substitute the value from equation 3 and we get the equation in this form now this equation can be converted to the form uh, because uh, here delta is with y of b so uh, if i write in this form suppose uh, this 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 part can be written in this form you see when i'm taking delta inside so when we are applying it on this uh, function yb so that that gives you twice of delta yb and when you apply on this you will get 2 yb delta yb when you take the delta yb outside so you are left with only this quantity you are left with this quantity and two from here and two from here will be taken outside so actually this term is equivalent to this term again uh, we substitute here in place of this uh, the this term is equivalent to this term and we are writing this term as such so in all of these this this uh, delta y is also there so uh, all the terms we take delta outside so the rest of the thing is j so that this j becomes this thing because if you put delta here delta outside of this delta outside of that so all the things become like this this equation will be obtained so in this way now actually we have considered this uh, functional now it is reduced to this form in fact in such a problem our main aim is to form a functional of this form and then applying that uh, Euler's uh, equation you see uh, to hence to solve the boundary value problem given in equation 1 2 3 we optimize the functional 5 not the functional 4 in equation 5 we have incorporated the boundary conditions through the extra terms because uh, these extra terms have been obtained using the boundary conditions from where we have substituted the value of y dash b and y dash a so there is no need to take care of the fact that whether the choice function ykx satisfies the given boundary condition hence the boundary conditions are called suppressible suppressible means we uh, we and uh, we don't require to take care of those suppressible boundary condition and the boundary conditions with the prescribed values are called the essential boundary conditions. so two things are the suppressible boundary conditions suppressible boundary conditions and essential boundary conditions our choice function have to satisfy the essential boundary condition and uh, no need to take care of the suppressible boundary condition so let us see uh, one numerical problem based on this uh, note one more thing here uh, this is an important situation if beta 1 is 0 in equation 3 and if alpha 1 is 0 in equation 2 let us uh, 
assume this uh, first situation if beta 1 is 0 in equation 3 then the second term involving p of b in 5 has to be dropped because you can see if beta 1 is 0 the whole part becomes infinity so we, we we shall drop this term in the functional j and similarly if alpha 1 is 0 similarly if alpha 1 is 0 then we will drop this term we will drop this term because alpha 1 0 gives you the infinite so this is the case here so third term will be dropped in that case so now uh, you can see this example one where you are given this boundary condition and of course there is involvement of the derivative y dash one equal to zero so actually uh, here this must be the essential boundary condition and the uh, boundary condition with the derivative is the suppressible boundary condition so here uh, we shall assume uh, the choice function in such a way that that choice function satisfy this essential boundary condition so we can choose this y of x equal to 1 plus cx in fact you can choose the choice function y of x equal to 1 plus cx why because when you put x equal to 0 here so y of 0 will give you 1 so essential boundary condition is satisfied here so that is why this uh, choice function is appropriate now let us see uh, how we form the functional j in this situation uh, let us compare the given boundary condition with the standard boundary condition uh, given given a uh, boundary value problem with the standard boundary value problem so i can say that this is equation one this is equation two and this is equation three so let us compare the situation here you can see uh, this uh, y double dash plus y equal to zero can be written as minus y double dash minus y equal to zero in fact this can be written as d by dx <coughs> with minus sign minus of 1 sorry plus 1 a y dash and here it is 1 and minus I can say plus and here minus y equal to 0 and the boundary condition this can be written as 1 into y of 0 plus 0 into y dash 0 equal to 1 and this condition can be written as 0 y of 1 plus 1 into y dash 1 equal to 0 i have written this 3 in this form 2 is in this form and 1 is in this form so let us compare this with this one so you can get value of p q r alpha naught alpha 1 alpha 2 beta naught beta 1 beta 2 so let us see what are these here you can see that p is 1 p of x is 1 is constant function in fact here so here you can see this p of x is 1 and the function with y is considered as q so you can say q of x is minus 1 and of course in right hand side is 0 so you can say r of x is 0 now here this is alpha naught alpha naught is 1 alpha 1 is 0 so alpha 2 is 1 this is alpha 2 now here beta naught is 0 is 0 beta 1 is 1 and beta 2 is 0 so now substitute uh, uh, all the things appearing over here in equation 5 as discussed here here you put the values in this equation 
So you can see the alpha one is zero. So this term will be dropped and we will uh, consider this term here and this term here. So accordingly, you substitute the values so you can get the value of j. So let us see what is j here. j becomes the limit is from 0 to 1. Limit is from j equal to j will be equal to integral 0 to 1. So what is p here? p is in fact 1. 1 into you have y dash square so right here y dash square then we'll be having q y square plus q y square here so we write here q q is minus one and we write here y square y square r is zero so we will stop here dx plus in the this term you see we have value of uh, beta 2 beta 2 is 0 and beta naught is also 0 so beta 1 is something uh, 1 here so p of b is constant is 1 so you can say uh, in place of this the all things are 0 so we are left with only this term and that gives you this type of functional form so in fact this j here is coming like this now we choose you have already chosen that yx is 1 plus cx y is equal to 1 plus cx uh, we uh, need not worry about this this third one this is the suppressible boundary condition because we have chosen the uh, uh, approximate uh, solution according to this equation too so uh, you put here j equal to y dash k here so y dash equal to from here y dash equal to uh, this 0 and c so y dash is c so in place of y dash square you will write here c square in place of y square you will write 1 plus cx square dx after uh, integrating it and substituting the limits you get this form 2 c square by 3 minus c minus 1 so now dj by dc equal to 0 that gives you c equal to 3 by 4 therefore the approximate solution in this case is yx is equal to 1 plus 3x 3 by 4x now if we compare this with the exact solution because i have already uh, explained how to find the exact solution for this type of boundary value problem you know the usual method here the auxiliary equation will become d square plus 1 y equal to 0 so that using this you get the exact solution and that will come in this form and uh, you see these two solutions gives the value 1.750 and 1.851 when x equal to 1. In fact, when you put x equal to 1 in this one, this is the approximate solution obtained and this is the exact solution. This is the exact solution. So when you put x equal to 1 here and x equal to 1 here, so using these two, we get the values this one 1.851 and 1.75 so uh, because at x equal to 1 uh, there is a <clears throat> some difference difference is more here so uh, we want to uh, make our approximate solution more closer to the exact solution so in that situation as i have already explained uh, during the discussion of relates method that we can choose uh, the approximate function or approximate solution in such a manner that may involve more than one arbitrary constants. In earlier one, I have chosen the approximate solution with one arbitrary constant C, but here if we choose the solution in such a way that involves two arbitrary constants that is C1 and C2. Then uh, from here you can see it is also satisfying the essential boundary condition because if you put x equal to 0 here, so this part is 0, this part is 0. So y of 0 is 1. So our essential boundary condition is being satisfied over here, this y of 0 is 1. So this uh, solution is appropriate, this choice is appropriate. Now again proceeding in the same manner, you put here, uh, here in fact y dash x uh, is equal to 
1 plus uh, c1 plus 2 c2 x now this becomes the y dash so now you write here uh, y dash and uh, not one this is in fact this is zero so you will write here y square then uh, y dash square minus y square so after simplification you will get the values in expression in terms of c1 and c2 so now there are two constants so in order to get maximum or minimum value for this we substitute this curly j by curly c1 equal to 0 and curly j by curly c2 equal to 0 that yields two equations this one and this one by solving these two equation we get c1 and c2 and substituting over here the values of c1 and c2 we get this one so using two uh, constants we get approximate solution in this form now we put y of 1 here y of 1 equal to uh, 0 0.849 which is uh, very close which is very close to the exact value uh, 0 0.85 actually it is it should not be uh, this one it should be one point and here one point eight five one it should be like this so now uh, this approximate solution is closer to this because we have chosen here two arbitrary constants so more arbitrary constants you choose in the solution more will be your solution closer to the exact solution so this is the solution of this problem similarly uh, next example is there here estimate the least eigenvalue of this problem means you have to find the value of uh, lambda and in view of the same uh, related method and uh, the essential and suppressible boundary conditions so as in the last example you can get the functional in this form j comes out to be this and when we choose the one term approximation approximation will be chosen in this way that y of 0 should give you 0 so this is one term approximation here and uh, when you substitute the values here this j will give you this thing and then lambda comes out to be 3 so this is the least eigenvalue and you can also find the exact uh, value of this lambda and you can compare with this the next example uh, we solve y double dash equal to 0 y at 0 is this and uh, y1 plus y dash 1 equal to zero so now you can see in this situation uh, obviously this uh, px actually this is one this is two and this is three so you can say in this case px is again i can say it's one qx is zero and rx is zero i can say this alpha naught is uh, one alpha 1 0 alpha 2 1 beta naught is 1 beta 1 is 1 and beta 2 equal to 0 while comparing with those and we form the functional j and that functional j comes out to be this because once you get these values and you substitute in uh, this equation here in this uh, j here uh, definitely you are going to get this type of functional g now here essential boundary condition is y at 0 is 1 so we can choose the approximate solution in this form we have y x equal to 1 plus c x so when you put 0 you get y of 0 is 1. now after using this y x we can have y dash x equal to uh, c so substituting the value of y dash here and of course uh, y of 1 comes out to be y of 1 comes out to be 1 plus c so substituting the these values y dash and this y of 1 in this equation so uh, we can have 0 to 1 and here y dash square dx here so this is c square and 1 plus c square uh, y c square dx will be here because y dash value of y dash x is c so this becomes c square and this dx and in place of this y square this is not in the integral so plus 
plus 1 plus c square will be there. So this dx is not there. So consequently, uh, this comes out to be this. j is this. So dj by dc equal to equal to 0 gives you c equal to minus 1 by 2. And when you substitute this value over here, you get this as approximate solution. And when you try to find the exact solution of this equation 1 uh, using the bound conditions, the exact solution also comes out to be same. So in this uh, example, the exact solution and the approximate solution both are same. So these are certain exercises which you can try uh, based on this discussion. So that is it about this lecture. This is the reference here. Thank you.